In last week's video, we covered the basics of Sublime Text color schemes, what they are, how they work, and that there's not one but two different kinds of color scheme format files for you to be able to use. And the second of those, the newer color scheme format, has enhanced capabilities over what the previous legacy type color scheme format can offer. And if you happen to be using one of those legacy color schemes, you may find yourself wishing that you had a version of it in the new color scheme format so you could take advantage of that new functionality and it's just a little bit easier to look at as well. As it turns out in this video, I'm going to show you a quick and painless way to convert from the old color scheme format to the new one. Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here, and welcome to this next video in this series on color schemes in Sublime Text. Now in that first video in this series, we covered the basics of color schemes, the overall what they are, how they work, and that there's not one but two different types of color schemes available. And in future videos in this series, we'll be going into more detail into exactly what is available for you to set colors in the, all the different parts of the file, how color rules work, how to augment color schemes, and things of that nature. That's all things that are still upcoming on the channel. In this particular video though, we're going to cover a slightly different topic still related to color schemes though, and that is what if you are using a TM theme version file right now, the older XML based color scheme file, but you want to be using a Sublime color scheme version file instead because it's easier to read, uh, at least I think so, or because it has those enhanced capabilities that we touched on uh, very briefly, and again we will cover that in an upcoming video uh, that allows you to specify colors in a lot of different ways by RGB color hex, by name, by the uh, HSL value, and even by deriving colors based on what other color variables are set to, and being able to create color variables as well. So you can come up with a theme based on a few core colors that are modified and then just change those core colors and have the whole look and feel of the color scheme change and tweak as a result. It's a very powerful feature. If you're using one of those other color scheme formats, the older TM theme file format, you may wish that you were using one of the newer ones to be able to have that functionality, and the good news is it is ridiculously easy to convert. The functionality is built directly into Sublime Text. You don't even have to install a third-party package to do it, although, as we'll see in upcoming videos, package dev... I always recommend package dev if you're doing anything package resource related, even if you're not a developer, it's going to have enhanced syntax highlighting and commands to make your life a little bit easier. But as I said, there's a few reasons why you might be using one of those old color scheme formats. You may be using a package that provided color schemes in a TM theme format. You may have just be a longtime user of Sublime Text where you had a color scheme that you created or that you started as a basis of another color scheme that you added to over time in that other format. Whatever the reason, if you'd like to convert from the older one to the newer one, it's really easy to do. The first thing you have to do is actually open the color scheme that you'd like to modify because the command we're going to see will only appear when the current file is a color scheme file. For our purposes here, I'm going to use view package file to do that because it's a lot easier than going into the file browser and uh, scooting around. Plus, I can look inside of Sublime package files. And we're going to look at the Cobalt pack, uh, color scheme, which uh, as we covered in uh, last week's video, this is one of those color schemes that's in the color scheme legacy package. This is TM theme type color schemes that used to be part of the default color scheme package in Sublime, but were moved into this color scheme legacy package, which does still ship with Sublime, by the way. This package will still be there. You don't have to install that package either it is there. But these are color schemes that are sort of legacy color schemes, as the name suggests, which were never updated going forward as the enhancements to syntaxes in Sublime Text were adding more and more functionality for things that could be colored. So that's why they're sort of shunted off and gated behind uh, that setting that we covered in the previous video to make them appear if you use the interactive color scheme chooser. But I'm going to open that file here. And again, as we see, this is an XML file. It, this particular one, not the most unreadable. Some TM theme files I've seen are indented in weird ways or laid out in funny ways that makes them a little bit harder to see. But it's not the greatest uh, in the world. And the fact that everything is in two lines and the structure is very specific because it's a plist does make things a little bit easier. Very easy to convert that, though. You just jump into the command palette and look for the command convert color scheme like so. And as it, this will only appear if the file that you're currently editing is a TM theme file. And as soon as we choose that, we get to... Uh, tell it how we would like it to convert our color scheme for us. And there are three different ways that this can be done. We can create no variables or we can create variables in one of two different ways. And just to start with, we're going to choose is this none hard code all colors. And as soon as we do that, this new tab pops up. This is, that's it, that one 
key press there that I did to hit enter, I've converted the color scheme from the old format to the new format. As we can see, it has this, the values that the other file has. We can see there's the foreground color, background color, carrot color, and things of that nature. Those are in here now. The rules are in here. And what this has done literally is just take those old rules, those old globals, convert them to what they should look like in the new format, take the RGB color codes directly out of that file, plonk them into this one. Here you go. This is the most basic and simple conversion that you can do. You might do this if you don't really care to take care, uh, take advantage rather of the variables uh, right away, if you just wanted to start off by having a new formatted file, uh, this is the way to do it. And if like me, you're using package dev, don't be concerned. The colors, the uh, syntax highlighting that you're seeing here isn't the enhanced package dev syntax highlighting yet because the file hasn't been saved. And when it comes to saving this file, you're going to want to make sure you save it into your user package. And remember, you can always get to your user package by going up to preferences, browse packages. That's also available in the menu. That command will open a file browser that shows you your packages directory. Inside of there is a user folder. That's the place to store this file. And that command will work across Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, no matter how or where you installed Sublime. That will take you to the appropriate place. Make sure you save the file with a Sublime color scheme format so Sublime knows it is a color scheme. And uh, for reasons we're going to talk about in more detail in an upcoming video, you want to either change the name of this file to not be the same as the other one, the the first part, the file name. So you would either save this as something like Cobalt New or Cobalt Converted or something, something that's not Cobalt. Or once you do this, you save this as Cobalt and then remove the TM theme version of the file or rename it so that it has a different name. And we're going to cover that more in an upcoming video. But I'm going to go ahead and close that file now. And if we come back to this one and run the command again, there are two other things to do here. And both of these are going to take the colors out of this existing TM theme file and try to convert ver to convert them into variables into the top of the file, like the uh, other color scheme format that we saw in the previous video. And then it's going to be able to use those colors as variables throughout the remainder of the, uh, the file, which gains you the, the start of having those variables in there so you can start tweaking things up and having things work the way you want. And how the variables are created and what format they're created depends on which of these two options you choose. If you were to choose, for example, hex to use hex variables for colors, then what you're going to see in here is that the variables have names and the values of them are the hex values from the other file. And um, the names of these variables come from taking the RGB colors and sort of trying to analyze and see where along the color spectrum they lie. And then it picks sort of the, the, basis, the basic core color that that color is closest to and uses that as the name of the variable. And the more colors there are that are closer to that, the more versions of it you get. That's why there's, for example, six versions of the black color here because there's six really dark colors. These may not be exactly black. Cyan may not be exactly cyan. Orange may not be exactly orange, particularly as you start getting into more of those higher numbered colors. Um, that's just something to keep in mind one of the things you can do is rename these variables as you see fit. It's going to be really easy to do that now that they are variables. And again, you gain the ability to modify the black in one place and have it appear everywhere that the variable is referenced and things of that nature or change the name of the variable. As we can see down here in the uh, global section, now the foreground color is set to the white variable. The background is set to the black variable, the same as the other one. And uh, the last option available to us in this particular item is the HSL variables for colors. And in that case, we get, uh, as we saw in the previous video, the HSL, the hue, saturation, luminosity, lightness. And again, I can, I can never remember what that L is. I probably should have looked it up after I didn't remember what it was in the last video. But uh, that's how these are set up here. But other than that, this is the same as the value of the file that we just saw a second ago. And something to point out here is that when you choose one of the two conversion options that creates these variables, one of the things that happens as part of the conversion process here is it does do that thing where it takes each of those RGB color values, the hex values, and see where upon the color line they fall so it knows how to create the names of these variables. Um, when it comes to loading TM theme files and Sublime color scheme files, Sublime is pretty lenient about things being missing and colors being potentially broken. This is particularly the case for TM theme files. I've seen this in a lot of TM theme files. There are some of them where the color values that it's using are just 
wrong or missing entirely. And in those cases, Sublime does the best it can to come up with an appropriate color or what it tries to deter determine is the appropriate color. And uh, in that case, those color schemes will still load, even though technically speaking, they're, they're broken. They're not following the specification. And while that works, while it's loading a TM theme file, it won't work if you try to convert to a Sublime color scheme file with variables if there are things like missing color values or colors that are outside of the RGB appropriate spectrum if the values are too high, uh, for example. And the symptom of that is that you're, you're going to come to this file and you're going to say, okay, I want to convert color scheme. I want HSL variables. And when you choose it, no new tab pops up. Nothing seems to happen when you choose the command, even though the command palette closes. If that's the case, then there's probably something broken inside of your TM theme file. There's something wrong with it that couldn't be converted. And if that was the case, then what you want to do to verify that is go up to the uh, view menu and come down to show console, or as we have seen in uh, many videos before, you can use control backtick. That's going to open the console down here and you look for some sort of error that seems to indicate that there was a problem. You'll see actually a Python stack trace there. And if that's the case, then there's something wrong with your color scheme. The most expedient expedient fix to that is to use the convert uh, color scheme command and choose hard code all colors because in that case it's just going to pull all those RGB values out and plunk them into the other file directly without trying to do any sorts of conversions or variable names or analysis at all. And then once that file is created uh, over in the other tab then you could go through it and try to find the ones that seem like they're broken. It is literally that easy to convert from the older color scheme format to the newer one. So if you happen to be using one of those older color scheme formats and you wish you could take advantage of the features afforded to you by the newer format of the file, or like me, you just don't want to look at XML and you wish it was a JSON file, you now have the ability to do that. Now, of course, there are still other videos planned in this series that go into more depth on how to apply colors and color rules and things of that nature. So make sure you use those buttons to thumb, subscribe, and share as you deem appropriate so you don't miss those videos when they come out. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down in that comment section below. And until the next video, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.